Welcome back to Cooking or Something Like It. My name is Jody. Uh, today, we are actually doing a whole lot of things. We are filming our pulled pork entree recipe, which is gonna go on for several hours. Uh, you'll see that probably before this video comes out. But we figured, since uh, Sundays are kind of reserved for cooking around here, that we would do some other stuff in the meantime. So, what do I have here? I have here a whole lot of stuff on this butcher block, and I'm going to try to give you my best take on a Coquille St. Jacques. Now, a Coquille St. Jacques is a traditional scallop appetizer. Um, if you've watched any of these videos, you know that I'm not going to do it the traditional way. So, we're going to give this a go. I'm not quite sure how this is going to come out, but uh, I have, what, a dozen ingredients here? so. We're gonna give it a shot and see how this goes. First thing I'm gonna do, I have here some pancetta. This is actually some really nice pancetta that I got at the store this morning. Um, thank you, Gunnar, for drinking your water right in the middle of my intro. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody loves Gunnar anyways. So pancetta, I had them cut it extra thick. I'm gonna throw this in the pan here and we're gonna toast this so it crisps up a little bit. Let's see. Now, if you are looking at the entirety of my kitchen right now, which I'm not sure exactly how much you can see. You can see it's a total disaster. But that's okay, because on Sundays, we cook food here. In fact, uh, the child is making... What Cupcake. are you making, child? Cupcakes covered with marshmallows. Cupcakes covered with burnt marshmallows. He's actually toasting them with my, my flambe torch. And uh, we're making the pulled pork, which you'll see the video for earlier, or later. And uh, we're gonna do some scallops right now. So. Pancetta in the pan. Now, pancetta is a seasoned, rolled-up pork belly. Uh, similar to prosciutto, not quite as salty, a little bit different spices. So I'm going to let that get going in this pan. I want to crisp that up to get a nice, crispy, almost bacon-like texture on it. In the meantime, rather than me go through all of these ahead of time so you lose track, I'm going to try and do this one at a time. I have a quarter cup of flour I'm putting in a bowl. I'm going to add to that about a half a teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of Ethiopian berberry. Now, I realize that probably 1% of the people that are watching this have ever even heard of Ethiopian berberry. So I got the container out because I don't even remember everything that's in it. This is a very popular Ethiopian spice. It's similar to curry in Indian cuisine. But just to give you an idea, this is what berberry is. Paprika, black pepper, coriander, nutmeg, ginger, ajwan, allspice, bird's eye chili, fenugreek, cardamom, clove, Himalayan pink salt, onion, and garlic. So that's what I just put in the bowl. But again, this is kind of like, a, a, like curry is to Indian cuisine. It's a very commonly used spice. I happened to buy it pre-made. Uh, it's for a, a recipe that I did a while ago for a kitfo. Kitfo is like steak tartare, but the Ethiopian version. So, uh, but it'll work very similar to a curry. If you don't have berberry, which, let's be honest, um, you can use curry. You can use chili powder. You can just use garlic if you want. But I think this is going to give a real nice flavor. So, I'm going to take this. Gonna mix this up. And it has a very, very curry-like flavor to it. I can smell it real pungent. All right, I have sea scallops here. Now these are, I think these are 1020 scallops. In other words, 1020, when you see on shrimp or scallops, when it says like 3040 or 2010, that means that's how many there are to a pound on average. So these are 10, 20 scallops, which means there's between 10 and 20 to a pound. So we're going to take these, and we're going to put them in our flour, salt, berberry mixture. All right, we're going to toss them. I made so many wings in my life, huh? All right, so we got a nice good coat on those. Now, being that scallops are a seafood, 
you do want to discard the juice that comes off them. Uh, make sure you wash that plate good. Alright, let's see how's our pancetta doing here. I guess the spatula might work better. It's starting to get crisp, that's what we want. is getting good and crisp. I'm not going to let it come all the way crisp. I'm going to take this off now and I'm going to put this back in the bowl. But right now, Miles, you want to throw that fan on over yeah. there so that we don't get the fire alarm going off? It probably will still go off, but that's okay. Wouldn't be the first time we filmed the video with the fire alarm in the background. Or the last. Or the last, that's for sure. Okay, so uh, I've got my pancetta somewhat crisp. Right now it's probably the texture of bacon. Um, you'll see, well we're not going to finish it right now, but we will finish it later, you'll see. Alright, so, we're going to put heat back on this. I have here in this bowl, four tablespoons of butter. I'm going to take about half of that. Scallops are good and coated. We're going to let this butter melt down. Now, just to be fair, I am totally winging this. We did the absolute minimal amount of planning on this video. Um, Miles wanted me to do an appetizer. So we're doing an appetizer. And uh, hopefully this comes out all right. Okay, we got a good butter, butter melt in the pan here. We're going to take these scallops, put them in here, and give us a little more heat. Okay. Now you're going to have a little bit of flour left over in this bowl. Not a lot. Hang on to this. You'll see why in a minute. All right, so we got the scallops going in the butter. We'll let that go for a second. Scallops, I know it's seafood. The best scallops are going to be cooked just through. In fact, you can eat scallops raw. They serve scallops as sashimi or raw fish, uh, like sushi. Um, you don't want to overcook them because what's going to happen is if you overcook them, they shrink and they get really tough. So we want to just sear these on both sides. Now, my stove is not level like the rest of my house, so I'm going to turn this pan a few times. Don't be alarmed at that. You may not have to do that. So I can see right now on the bottom those scallops are getting a little bit brown. We're going to take a sip of wine. Cheers. Give them a couple more minutes. Now, what else do I have here? So I have green pepper, I have button mushrooms, I have Asiago cheese, this is chopped oregano, I have panko breadcrumbs, and a little bit of ground ginger, sorry, ground mustard. And you'll see how this all comes together. Alright, so we're gonna turn these. And you'll see they got a nice light golden brown. Now, I know that some of you that are watching this video actually know quite a bit about cooking. And you're going to watch this and say, that is not Cookie St. Jock. And I'm going to respond, I know. But this is my kind of take on it, and I think it's going to be good. And if it doesn't fit the classic recipe, I don't care. It's still good. So cook what you like, like what you cook. That's all that really matters. 
While these scallops are browning on the other side, some little administrative stuff, make sure you check out our Facebook page, Cooking or Something Like It. Uh, the videos are always posted there first, as well as the link to the blog on the website, which the website happens to be, cookingorsomethinglikeit.com. On there you will find all the archived videos, the blogs, pictures, my incredibly witty banter, which you should all read, love. Uh, also links to our Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, am I forgetting? That's it. So check those out on the Contact Us page on the website. You can find links to all that stuff. All right, so these are seared on both sides. One thing I didn't mention, uh, make sure you have your broiler going on high before you start this. Even if you forgot and you're following along word for word as I'm doing this, you still have time now. Do it now. Yep. Right. We have a nice, a nice little char on both sides. We're going to take these off the heat. Okay. There we go. Scallops have been cooked on both sides. We're going to take the other two tablespoons of butter, put it in the pan. We're going to let that melt down. To this, I have two large white button mushrooms. These are your most common type of mushroom. If you want to use something else, by all means, shiitake, inaki, maitake mushrooms would be amazing in this. But I'm going to use button mushrooms just because they're fairly inexpensive. So this is two large button mushrooms cut up fairly thin. I have probably about half of a green pepper. Give or take a little bit. And what I'm making right now is going to be the topping for the scallops. So don't worry about quantities too much. Um, if you don't have as many scallops as I just cooked, which I actually have more than I thought I did, but if you don't have that many and you have a little bit less topping, it's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Alright. So I'm actually seeing something I hadn't anticipated, and you can tell this is live. Those mushrooms are sucking up that butter a little bit, so I am going to actually take another two tablespoons of butter and put it in there. So we're going to double the amount of butter to twice as much, so four tablespoons of butter. Okay. So we've got mushrooms, we've got green peppers sauteing in a butter mixture. Now if you can see that. It looks amazing. To this, we're going to add our pancetta back. This is going to add a little more grease to our mixture, so you're going to get a little more oil. All right. Now, dried mustard. About a half a tablespoon. Sprinkle this over the top. We're going to take, this is oregano. This is fresh oregano, probably a heaping tablespoon of fresh oregano. We're going to sprinkle that in and give that a stir. Now, if I wasn't to tell you that this smelled amazing, I would be lying. All right, now to this, I'm going to take, actually before I do that, the flour that I tossed the scallops in. I'm going to kind of make a roux here, but I'm going to kind of make it after the fact. So this is going to be a little trickier. So whatever flour I had left over from tossing the scallops, I'm now going to add about a quarter cup of half and half. Turn the heat off. 
Okay. Asiago cheese. About a half a cup. We now have a pretty thick mixture here. Okay. We're going to let that sit for a second. I have here, if you've ever eaten fajitas out at a restaurant, you'll recognize these. These are what they call sizzlers. Oops, sorry. These are pans that you heat up in the oven to make the sizzling pans that they use to serve fajitas. All right? That's what we go right there. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of. Julian, where's that? Oh, there it is. So, this is an olive oil cooking spray. This is just to keep stuff from sticking. Top of this, I am going to place my scallops. Don't worry about it. It's going to happen. It'll still be awesome. sooner or later. All right, now, you can cook it just like that. I have quite a bit of stuffing left here. I am going to top this in the middle of these scallops. You don't have to do this. You can just cook it just like it is. I'm going to do this so that I can serve this just like they are, and there's extra stuffing in the middle. If you don't want the extra stuffing, just let it, just cook it just like that, okay? All right, there we go. Now, on top of all of this, we're gonna take this panko breadcrumbs, and we're gonna give it a real good coating. It's gonna add a little bit of crispiness to the top of these scallops. like to say thank you everybody that's watching these um, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback we appreciate all the comments if you guys have anything that you want to see us make by all means let us know we'd be happy to do it uh, the pulled pork recipe that we're going to do that we're finishing today we started earlier um, is more of an entree this is more of an appetizer but we're really happy to do anything um, appetizers entrees salads we've got some some really neat stuff that we're planning coming up we're going to do a nice corned beef for uh, St. Patrick's Day to give you an idea for a recipe for that. It's uh, the corned beef that, that made Miles a convert to eating corned beef on St. Patty's Day. So hopefully uh, you all like it. Um, but really, comment, tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. You know, we're happy to make anything work. So we're going to give this just a couple minutes here. Now, like I said, those are sizzlers that you use for fajitas. 
So they usually come with these wooden trays like this. If you don't have a sizzler, use a cast iron pan. If you don't have a cast iron pan, go get one. Seriously. Like, we've talked about this. Go get one. <laughs> Anyways. Um, if you don't, a casserole dish will work, but you're not going to get the same sizzle. You're not going to get the same crispness to it. Um, these work really well because I have two trays there. You can serve them two at a time. They work as a really nice appetizer. Honestly, for this dish, you don't really need any kind of dipping sauce. That cheese, that cream is really going to melt very nicely. And it should be very decadent. This is a very classic appetizer. Coquille Saint Jacques is a very classic French appetizer. I use oregano. The classic recipe tends to use tarragon. That's what has a little bit more of an anise or licorice flavor. Um, and the, the traditional recipe uses Gruyere instead of Asiago. If you're a purist, I apologize. But uh, this is going to be awesome, trust me. Right, just a couple more seconds. Not sure what to do with dead air here, but it's such a short video that uh, I don't really have anything else to say. But anything, Miles? Where'd you get the sizzle plates from? <laughs> <laughs> you can cut that part out. <laughs> All right. You can see they're nicely charred on top. My tongs go. Here we go. Cookie St. Jacques, cooking or something like it style. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we are going to eat all of these right now and love every bit of them. So we'll see you next time. Stick around later on today. Uh, we're going to finish that pulled pork recipe. That should be up um, probably after this. Before I don't know. Honestly. Probably after since you said that we're doing it after right. this video. So we'll do it after this one. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Check us out, email us, contact us, call us, stop by. You're always welcome. Until next time, I'm Jody. Stay